Right, we're going to get started tonight. We're glad to see you in the house of the Lord. Uh, Brother Charlie is going to come in just a few minutes. We want to make some announcements here. Uh, I chose to do this online because we do have some that are not here tonight that uh, normally do come. Uh, we want everybody from the church to, to be aware of what we're doing. I'm sure that I'll send out something uh, this week to uh, let everybody know again. Uh, I received a letter today from our state overseer. And I'm just going to read the highlighted part of this uh, that was in bold letters. This is what he said to pastors and churches. He said, I'm herein recommending that pastors and local churches consider uh, taking a pause from in-house services and go back to online only for the next several weeks or at least until the upward trend flattens and begins to decline. So we've, we've prayed about this and we want to do what's right. We have, throughout this whole ordeal, we have, uh, you know, I've listened to Governor Cooper and what his, uh, what their mandates were, but uh, we have followed the instructions of the state office. That's what we've tried to comply with, uh, as Dr. Bell has, in, you know, tried to inform us of what, you know, they want us to try to do. He's not uh, made anything a mandate with us, but he's recommending these things. So, uh, beginning this Sunday morning, uh, trying to comply with what they're asking us to do. Uh, we are going to go back to Sunday morning services only. Uh, it'll still be at 11 o'clock. Uh, there'll be no Sunday night services or Wednesday night services in-house. Uh, they'll be online only uh, just for the next few weeks. And we're going to pray that God will just, you know, the numbers, I know they continue to rise. And so uh, we're going to try to do everything we can to comply with the state office and uh, you know, make sure that everyone here is safe to the best that we can. Now, uh, so just, just a few things here that we're going to change. Uh, when you come in now, I think Brother Charlie probably informed everybody here tonight, from now on, starting this Sunday, you will be required to, to wear a mask when you come into the building. Uh, if you don't have a mask, you won't be allowed to come in. Uh, so we, we know we won't have any problems with this. Uh, please bring your mask, wear that mask into the building. Once you get in your seat, you can take that mask off. Uh, you don't have to wear it during the service. Uh, at the end of the service, we want you to wear that, put that mask back on uh, and wear that mask back out of the building. Let's make sure that when we get outside that we're not congregating right in front of the building there. Uh, if you want to congregate, make sure you keep your social distancing and, you know, out in the parking lot. Uh, I know this is, not, this is not comfortable right now. I know this is not pleasant right now. Uh, but we're going to do what we have to do to get through this thing and do it safely and uh, trust that God's going to help us and, and see us through this storm. Also, we want to remind you uh, that when you come in, please stay in your seat. Uh, I know we want to fellowship, but for the time being, let's remain in our seats. If you have to go to the restrooms, please do that before service uh, unless you have an emergency. Uh, we're only here an hour. If you have to go four or five times during the service, you may need, probably need to see a physician. There's probably something wrong with your bladder. Uh, but, you know, please try to do that before the service. Uh, again, if you're in here and you just have an emergency, you have to go, please put your mask on. Uh, when you go back there, make sure you wear that mask the whole time until you come back in and are seated here. Uh, so please don't forget this. If you, are, if you are sick, if you have a fever, if you are coughing, uh, please stay home. Please don't, don't come out here. Uh, obviously, if you test positive for covid uh, please stay home. Is that right? But if you have any kind of symptoms of this, 
Uh, let's just be mindful of each other uh, and try to help one another in this. Um, so we want you to treat these Sunday night services and Wednesday night services just like we're having church. Now, I sent a letter out yesterday to everybody. I, I believe everybody received that uh, on Sunday mornings. We hope you'll be able to be in the building. Uh, on Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, at Sunday night at 6 o'clock, that's the time of service. So if you're at home, turn everything else off, get in front of your phone or your computer, your iPad, ever how you watch the service, and let's be disciplined in that. On Wednesday night, the same thing at 7 o'clock, that's church time. Uh, I know, listen, there, there's going to be a temptation there to on Sunday evening or Wednesday evening, I'm tired, I've got other things going on, I'll just wait and watch the service tomorrow. You probably won't. Something else will come up. So we want to remain disciplined during this time and make sure that when it's church time, Sister Angela shared with me this week, uh, God bless her. She shared with me, she said on Sunday morning when it's church time, she said, I get dressed up just like I'm going to the house of God. Now, she's not going to leave the house, but she's going to get in that service and be a part of that service. I'm not telling you you have to do that. You can if you want to. But we want to try to keep it as structured as we can as if we're going to the house of God. We want to encourage you to keep praying, keep seeking the Lord. Make sure that in your home, when we're not able to be here, let's make sure we're praying through like we would in the altar. I know we don't have each other around to help pray with one another, but it's a necessity. It is a necessity that we continue to pray through till we get touched by God in our home. We can't just wait till this thing's over till we can get back in the altars, and then, you know, then I'll get that, that in the presence of the Lord. Don't grow slack and don't grow lukewarm and don't let up in this time. There's going to be a temptation to do that. The enemy will use this time as something bad against the church and the people of God to cause us to grow weary and slack. So let's be diligent. As we said yesterday in that letter, let's stay alert and stay sharp and let's stay close to God uh, during this time. Now, I told you on the Sunday night, we're not going to live in fear, but we're not going to live foolish either. We're going to live by faith, but we're also going to be aware of what we're dealing with here. And uh, I, I told a pastor friend of mine today, God forbid that somebody in this local church gets sick and we're to die from this. God forbid that. And uh, we're not going to make it mandatory for you to wear a mask inside the service while we're in the service. We don't want to do that. Uh, but if you'll help us with this, I, I share it with a, another pastor friend of mine today how, how what a wonderful job that you've done with these restrictions. I don't like them no more than you do. I, I don't, matter of fact, I can't stand having to do it this way. I don't like it. Uh, but until we get on beyond this thing, uh, we want to do what we feel like is best for this church. We've given prayer to it, and we feel like this is the right way. Uh, we can't go outside right now. I, I wouldn't dare ask you to try to sit in your cars right now. Uh, it's just too hot. But we'll keep you posted uh, as, as we continue to hear from our state office, from our overseer, uh, and as things change or things get better. Uh, hopefully and prayerfully it won't be long. We can get right back in here on Sunday nights and, and Wednesday nights and get back uh, better than it was before. Okay? God bless every one of you. Now remember also, if you do come without a mask, you, you can't. We have them at the, at the, on the, the vestibule table. If you need one, get one on the way out. But if you come out here, you won't be able to come in and get a mask. You have to wear one from your car into the building. And uh, let's be safe, okay? Let's think about each other. I know that you will. And uh, let's keep praying. I'm asking God daily to destroy this thing, just to destroy and wipe this thing away. And I believe he's going to help all of us and keep us safe and get us through this time. I know that the numbers, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not naive to that. I know that some of this is political. I know that some of these numbers have been, you know, they've been ramped up. I know that. There are, there are some false positives. I know all that. But I agree with the overseer. This virus is still real. I know people personally who've been sick with it. And I know it's real, so we want to be careful and uh, take care of ourselves and help take care of each other, but not let up and keep going forward with God. Amen? Everybody smile at me and let's have church tonight. Come on, Brother Chuck. God bless you. Good evening. I'm Charlie Lamb. I'm welcome to the South Asheville Church of God midweek service. I'll be able to say that tonight, but next week you'll have to watch online. Right. Uh, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. You know, he made this day for us, and you know, we should rejoice in it. Uh, talking about rejoicing, little Isaiah had a birthday last Friday. All right. So let's sing happy birthday to that little fella. Happy.
I tell you what, time flies. Two years old already. Right. Before you know it, he'll be 20. Uh, as we petition the Lord tonight in prayer, let's pray for a revival. A, re a revival that changes. Brother Branson and I was talking back there, and he was talking about, he said, you know, this, his generation, he don't know that he's ever seen a real revival that really changed. I told him, I said, yeah, I've seen them. It's been a long time, a revival that really changes people. Right. A real revival will change. Right. And we need revival. So let's pray for that revival. Let's continue to pray for Brother Josh and Sister Becky as they're ministering the gospel. Uh, pray for Brother Curtis and Sister Lisa Teague that God will continue to touch them and bless them. Uh, Brother Mike Woolard, uh, Brother Jeff Manus, uh, continue to pray for Isaiah. Let's pray for, continue to pray for Brother Zach's arm. I'm believing for a miracle there. I'm believing God's completely healing it. I had to go back and apologize to him the other night and ask him to forgive me. I said, you know, because one time, you know, I had to have my arm operated on when I was, tore my ligament. And I told him, I said, well, you know, if you're going to get it done, you better get it done right away. And I went back, I said, forgive me for that. I said, I'm believing with you for healing. So let's uh, pray for healing. Also, continue to uh, remember Brother Jimmy Jones. I think he's supposed to be in Florida this week in revival. Uh, continue to pray for him. And uh, remember Brother Joe's family. He said he had a lot of requests in his family. We will we'll stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Let's continue to remember Brother Sister Ball that God will continue to touch him. Brother Charlie, also, uh, Brother Mike Willard, they had to cancel their revival with Brother Pig uh, due to this, some things going on here. So pray for them and pray for those, all those evangelists who are not getting to preach right now. Some of them are not preaching anywhere. And let's pray God will help them. And uh, let's pray God will touch hearts and keep, keep sending the help to support them during this time. Amen. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, Lord God. I give you praise, I give you honor, I give you glory, Lord God, for this opportunity to be in your house tonight, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, this is the day that you have made, Lord God. And Lord, I rejoice, Lord, Lord, I thank you every time we come to the house of God, Lord God, we can join together. Lord, I ask you to your spirit in a mighty way tonight. Touch, Lord God, all those your families, Lord God, just not being able to advance a right now because of this COVID virus, Lord God. Lord, I ask God to help us and us, the people, the children of God, to support them, Lord God. Lord, I ask God to bless Brother Josh, Sister Becky, Lord, to bless them, to keep them safe in our travel. Lord, I ask God to bless Jimmy Jones, he's going to be in the floor, Lord, to God, preach for the Bible, Lord, God, keep them from guarding around them. My brother Curtis Lee, brother Sister Lisa, Lord, God, bless them, help them, Lord, God. Brother Mike Moore, Lord, God, touch him, Lord, God, touch him, Lord, God. Lord, brother Jeff Maynard, Lord, God, I lift them all up before you, Lord, God. effective witnesses for Christ or we like the, the Apostle Paul you know in Acts the 26th chapter the Apostle Paul before King Agrippa asked King Agrippa in Acts 26 and 27 says King Agrippa believest thou the prophets and then he says I know that thou believest He's, King Agrippa's response indicates Paul's effectiveness, effectiveness in verse 28 he said then Agrippa said unto Paul almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian who have we been persuaded to want to live a Christian life? 
You know, that's a question. Who have we persuaded? We should. We're, you know, we've got the best thing that there is. We've got Jesus Christ living within us. Yeah. We should tell everybody, persuade them to be a Christian. You know, this thing's wrapping up. The Lord can come at any time. We can see just the times around us, all the things going on. What would be a great time for the Lord to come back? People can get their minds on this COVID. They can get on all these other things, get their mind off of Christ. And he says he's going to come back when we're least expecting. Right. Praise God. Uh, at this time, let's receive a tithe and offering and get our ushers come. Brother Joe, you want to help, brother? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Joe, would you pray over this time of worship? Thank you, Lord. God richly bless you for your giving tonight. This time I'm going to have Sister Amy come and lead us in a congregational. I was sitting there thinking about a story I'd heard before and I've probably shared it uh, before but um, about all these restrictions that we have and things are different and all of that. But I'm reminded of a, of a story that I read one time of a couple that lived in communist China that were Christians and they wanted to sing. You know, we, we at Liberty here sing all the time we want, anytime we want, sing unto the Lord. But they together went into a cave, back into the darkest part, the depths of that cave, and they sang their hymns. And you think about that, there's no reason why we can't sit on a pew if we have to sit tonight and we have to lift our hands from there. It's different, it's awkward, but I'm telling you, we still have liberty in the Lord. There's still peace and freedom in Him, so let's sing unto Him tonight. I know it's just different, but hey, He's not changed, and I'm thankful we can do what we can do and for Him. I love Him. Let's sing Heaven's Jubilee. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise
Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to apologize. I was supposed to told y'all to remain seated as a precaution going forward when we have a song like this. Instead of standing, you know, we'll just be seated, and that way you know, we won't spread any germs. So just as a precautionary measure, we'll just stay remain seated when we sing. This time I'm going to turn the service to our pastor, Brother Sheldon. sing this song real quick. Sister, if you'll play that and sing that sure to the presence of the Lord's in this place. Lift your hands and let's love God tonight. Not because I've asked you to, but because you want to. Let's just worship him just a moment. Go ahead and sing that please, just for a minute. Come on, lift your hands and sing. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. You're watching online. Just lift your hand right there in your home, wherever you're at. Just worship God. Let's just worship him tonight. Let's worship him, saints. Lift your voice to him. Talk out loud to him tonight. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how you can't live without him. You need him. We need him now more than ever, but we've always needed him. We've always needed him. He's never failed us. He'll not fail us now. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's give him praise out loud tonight. Give him praise tonight. Come on, church. Come on, let's lift him up. Let's, let's just take, listen, we're in a hurry here. Let's just worship him. We've talked enough about COVID now. Let's just spend some time with him here. Let's glorify him here. Let's worship him here tonight. Come on, let's sing that. Sister Albright, come on back one more time, dear. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to let you get away. Let's just sing that one more. Matter of fact, let's just stand up right where we are. Let's just lift our hearts with our hands here tonight. Let's just lift our hearts with our hands and glorify him. You can say it out loud to him. You can say it to him in your mind. You can whisper it to him. He hears it all. He sees it all. And he knows it all. Let's just make sure it's coming from the depths of our heart as we lift him up and magnify him in this house. Sure. 
Please remain standing if you have your Bibles. Hebrews chapter 10 tonight. Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God, do help us in here tonight, Father. Hebrews chapter 10. We begin reading in verse 32 this evening. Do you love the Lord? Do you know He loves you? Do you know that He loved you before you loved Him? Amen. Amen. Hebrews 10, begin reading in verse 32. Bible says, But call to remembrance the former days, in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used or so treated. For ye had compassion of me and my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, you have need of endurance, that after ye have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he shall come. He that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back. We are not of them. Woo! We are not of them who draw back. Somebody shout amen to me tonight. We are not of them who draw back unto perdition, unto destruction, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. We'll bring you back to verse 35, please. The writer said, Cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. May God add His blessings to His red words. You can be seated for a little while tonight. I don't want to talk to you for a little while on this thought. I won't try to hold you a long time tonight. I feel God wanting to break through here tonight. Let's don't don't get in his way and not let him have his way. I feel God wanting to break through and do something here tonight. I want to talk to you on this thought of fearless confidence. A fearless confidence. In Hebrews chapter 10, we find the story of God's people who are enduring great affliction. The Bible tells us in verse 32 and 33, as we read here to you tonight, but call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of afflictions, partly while ye, whilst ye were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly while, whilst ye became companions of them that were so used. Uh, We find here that these were God's people, but yet they are suffering uh, and they're facing great difficulties. I believe that we see that often. I believe that not only in the days of old, but I believe that we see people today, people who are serving the Lord, uh, but yet they're having to suffer and they're having to endure great afflictions. The writer of the book of Hebrews then goes on and to say of himself in verse 34. He said, For ye had compassion of me in my bonds. Uh, Here is a servant of the Lord, uh, and the Bible tells us that he is in bonds. He's been arrested because of his faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I'm telling you, where is that crowd that says when you get born again, uh, everything's just going to be smooth sailing from here on out? The author says here that he has been in bonds and that because of his faith in God. Then the author here turns his attention back to those uh, of whom he's writing and he said here, and took joyfully uh, the spoiling of your goods. In other words, what he's saying is that these believers, these children of God, uh, their material blessings or possessions uh, have been confiscated by the enemy. They have lost everything because of their love for God. Their serving the Lord has cost them everything. Then he goes on, and this is what he says. Knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a, a better and an enduring substance. He said, cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. The Amplified Bible says of this latter part, do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence. For it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward. I looked up the word fearless. And the writer said of Hebrews, uh, uh, the word fearless means free from fear. It means brave. It means lion hearted. It means to be bold and to be stout hearted. The word confidence means faith or belief that one will act in a right proper and effective way. This is what the writer's saying to these believers. He's calling for them to keep that fearless confidence in the Lord God Almighty. Even during this time of affliction, even during this time of trouble, even during this time of hardship, you may lose everything else. You may lose all of your material possessions, but you keep your confidence and your trust and your faith in God. God Almighty, can somebody give him a hand of praise tonight? Woo! No matter what, keep your fearless confidence in God. These were a people who were suffering terrible circumstances. They're suffering emotionally. They're suffering physically. They're being scorned and they're being reproached. They're being beaten. They're being abused. They're being cast into prison. They're suffering economically. They're being stripped of all of their material possessions. And they're literally being turned into paupers. And because of their great suffering, some of them have entertained the idea. And some of them have entertained the thought of just giving up. Just throwing in the towel. When they look at their circumstance, when they look at the situations, they know that what they're dealing with is a result of their love and their service to God. And so they entertain that thought from the enemy. Why don't you just give up? Why don't you just quit? It. Why don't you just lay it down? And so the writer of Hebrews, he says to them, no matter what, don't you quit. No matter what, don't you give up. No matter what, don't you draw back. Things might be hard right now. Things may be difficult. And you may be going through afflictions and having to endure hardships. You may be suffering, but thank God that that you're still saved and that you're still on your way to heaven. I'm just telling you, friend, he's trying to encourage them. No matter what comes, no matter what may, don't ever give up, don't go back, don't turn around, but keep on going forward. There is a reward waiting for you on the other side. What a glorious reward for all of those who refuse to quit. Those who refuse to draw back. Those who refuse to give up in this race on our way to heaven. Just like that writer of the Hebrews. I'm telling you, I've been burdened over this church. I've been burdened over the young converts. I've been burdened over those that are attending services and those that have not been able to attend service. How many got my letter yesterday? 
I'm telling you, these are dangerous spiritual times. If the church has ever been determined individually and corporately that we're going to press right on in, if we've ever stayed sharp, I'm telling you, we can't be around these orders right now, but you better be around that order in your home. You better keep that Bible open. You better stay close to God. These are perilous and dangerous times. And just like the writer of Hebrews, I want to encourage this look church. I want to encourage those in the house of God tonight. Those watching online. I know this is a trying time. I know these are strange days. I know these times can be discouraging. But let me say to you child of God you just hold on tight to his unchanging hand. Don't you entertain the lies of the devil. Don't you entertain that stranger's voice. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Don't you draw back. You just keep on running. There's a reward waiting for you that will endure. Come on, lift your hands and give him praise tonight. Woo! Oh, come on, church. I feel God want to do something here tonight. I don't want to shortchange you or him tonight. Some of us need a touch. I said some of us need something divine. Some of us need something greater than the touch of a man's hand. We need God to reach down and touch us. I said we need something from heaven in this house tonight. You need something from heaven in that home tonight. I'm telling you we're at the right place at the right time for God to do something mighty, for God to touch us, for God to revive us, for God to give us the strength that we need to run right on. I am your strength. I am your great supplier. I will provide for you, saith the Lord. I will keep you during this dark time. I know where you are. You are not hid from me and my love. My strength remains the same and I know what you need. I am the Lord God and I will protect you. I will provide for you. I will see you through. Amen. Draw nigh to me, saith the Lord. Draw your strength from me, saith the Lord. And I will bring you safely through, saith the Lord God. Come on, church, under the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah to God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Come on, let's press in. Touch the hem of his garment tonight. Some of us can't afford to leave this service tonight without touching the hem of his garment. Come on, let's press on. Let's press right on in, saints of God. Come on, watching online. Let's press right on in here tonight. 
I'm telling you, some of us need a touch from God. Some of us here, our very existence depends on it. If we're going to face another day, we need that touch from God tonight. Let's press in. Let's lay hold of Him here tonight. <laughs> Come on, church, let's get a hold of him here tonight. Come on, let's press, let's press, let's press right into him here this evening. Hallelujah. Come on, lift him up. Let's glorify him. Tell him what you need right now. Tell him what you have need of right now. Woo! My God, my God, my God. Uh, the Holy Ghost is here tonight. Uh, the Holy Ghost is in this house tonight. Uh, come on, let's don't grieve him. Uh, let's don't bind his hands. Uh, let's submit to him. Uh, let's submit to him. Let him help us here tonight. Uh, Come on, stand right where you are. Lift your hearts and your hands to God. You watching online, stand up right where you are tonight. Come on, let's get in one mind and one accord here this evening. I, I'm telling you, i got a whole lot more to preach, I, but I'm going to get out of the way and let the Holy Ghost do what he's got the power to do. I, he can do more in a matter of minutes I, than we can do preaching all night long. I, just let him have you right here. I, let's just get together in one mind and one accord I, and let the Holy Ghost I, do what he desires to do in you. saints watching online. I know you're not here, but get right in this thing with us tonight. You can have a move of God right there in your home tonight. Come on, let's draw out that living water tonight. Let's draw fresh water from that fountain of salvation tonight. Let's let that, that fountain be like an artesian well to spring up inside of us. Sister Tracy, raise your hands back there. Lift both of them high and magnify him. Tell him what you need tonight. Tell him I'm not leaving here till I get what I need from you, oh God. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, God.
I'm thankful for the portion here. Now somebody tell him I want a double portion. I'm thankful for the portion we've already received. Uh, but now somebody tell him, God, I, I believe I'm going to have a double portion here tonight. Come on, church. Come on, saints of God. I want a double portion tonight, dear Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ghost. Let him feel and refill you tonight. Let him feel and refill you tonight. Let's don't draw back here tonight. Let's don't draw back here tonight. We need some recharging here tonight. We need some reviving here tonight. You might have come in discouraged, but you don't have to leave that way. You might have come in spiritually dehydrated, but you can be refreshed and revived and refilled tonight. Oh. Oh. Wow, we're right here in this kind of atmosphere. Let's pray for our brothers and sisters who can't be here right now. 
Let's pray for those that are watching online right now that can't be in here with us. Let's pray God will touch them in their homes or wherever they are like what we're feeling around here tonight. Let's pray for our lost family members. Let's pray that the Holy Ghost will convict them. Uh, let, let's pray for those that are drawing back. Let's pray for those that's lost their desire. Let's pray the Holy Ghost will touch them right where they are tonight, wherever they are. We don't know, but He does. Now let's lift our hands and thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's say it to Him. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Ghost. Thank you, sweet Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, pandemic or no pandemic, He's still God. The Holy Ghost is still real. He's still the Lord of the church and the Lord of glory. Good times and bad times, He's still our strength. He's all that we need. And everything you need is found in Him. And if, he, if you need it, He has it. And if He don't have it, then we don't need it.
Let's just worship him a little bit here. Let's talk to him. Let's spend some time with him. Sister, sing that song again, please. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray that again. Surely the presence of the Lord. Let's worship him, church. Come on, let's just love him for a little bit. We're going to go home just a little bit here, a few minutes. Let's just love on him tonight. Let's stay close to God's saints. Let's don't allow this time to cause us to draw back. Let's don't allow this time. Listen, the temptation is going to come because there's a tempter out there. The temptation is going to come to get slack, to let up, to slow down. When you're here, you're challenged. We're challenged by the Word. I'm challenged by the Word. You're challenged by the Word. We're not in church every day. We're not able to get these orders like we were at one time. We're not able to lay hands on one another right now. We cannot allow that to become a, a reason or an excuse of why I hadn't been touched by God lately. Got to kick the cobwebs, kill the spider, knock down the cobwebs, and make sure I'm in that prayer time like I'm supposed to be daily. Make sure I'm in that Word of God like I'm supposed to be daily. If anything, during a time like this, the church needs to press into Him. Because I'm telling you, He's the only one going to get us through this. He's the only one. You know, for so many years, people have depended on the church. Now we're at a time, Brother Baker, we can't be a part of the church like it was. Things are completely different now. We've depended on each other sometimes. We can't be there for each other like we were at one time. We've got to lean on God and trust in God to see us through this. Will He do it? Yes, He will. Will He do it? Yes, He will. He will. These are dangerous times. These are exciting times because we know that these things are going to happen before the Lord comes. But they're also perilous times and dangerous times. The writer said here, don't draw back. Don't let up. Don't quit. Don't quit. Dear God, don't quit. Don't slow down. Let's keep pressing in. Keep serving God. Keep living for Him. I told a pastor friend of mine recently, I have an advantage. I'm able to be over here every day. I'm able to be in these altars out here. I've got an altar at home, but I'm able to be in these altars every day. I'm able to come over here and shut everything off and spend time on the Word of God. Some of you are not able to do that like that. I have an advantage. I told somebody, and I told Brother Albright today, even when we had to close the doors out here for a while and just online only, I'm still preaching every service. I'm still, you know, the, listen to me. We're going to go through a season here. Things are going to get hard. Things may get harder, Brother Charlie, than they are right now. They may get harder. We've got to know who we are and, and who we believe and what we believe and why we believe it. And stand firm in it. Stand firm in the Word of God. Get full of the Holy Ghost. If there's ever been a time when people needed the Holy Ghost baptism, it is right now. And if you've been baptized, we can't let that thing leak out. That vessel become leaky. We need to be refilled again and again and again. And stay disciplined in our service to God. And our walk with God Almighty. Because the temptation is going to come. Let up. Slow down. Take a break. Pastor's not there preaching at you. Pastor's not there watching you all the time. Come on now. Sunday nights and Wednesday night for the time they won't be able to come in the house of God. It's going to be different. We were talking about that today. It's not the same as being here. Watching online, I'm glad we have that. I'm glad it could be the alternative to not have any way of, of, of having any contact or connection together during this time. Thank God we have that. But it's not the same as being in here. So we got to dig in our heels. Ride this storm out with the Master on board our vessel. And know that God's going to help us and see us through. And we are going to come through this storm. We are going to come out shining like gold for those that are determined. I told somebody today, my, my concerns for young converts, 
I was talking to Brother Oxendine today. I'm concerned for young converts. They can't afford to miss anything. Sister Shelton and I were talking the other night, and she said some of them don't even see the danger of it. They don't recognize the danger of it. This is a spiritual thing that we're in. It's a spiritual fight. It, it is a spiritual warfare. I've said it many times. This is not the love boat, friend. We're on a battleship, and there's a fight. I, I read recently that 35% of people said they would not be going back to church when this thing was over or when they were able to go back to church. 35% of people. That's a large number. That's a third of our churches. A third said they're not going to go back to church. There's some that's already drawn back because they're not, they're, not, they're not getting fed. They're not doing what they need to. to Listen, we have to make sure we're eating every day, every day. We can't take a day off and say, well, I'll just catch up and pray tomorrow. I'll just catch up and read my Bible tomorrow. These are serious times. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to tell you where we are. If we can be shaken, we will. Brother, Brother Keith Speed said, if you have a backup, if you have a reverse gear in you, the devil will find it. Make sure you know there's nothing to go back to. Make sure the door's locked, shut, closed, the key's thrown away, and there's nothing but to go forward with God, nothing to go back to. I told you yesterday in our letter, when we come back, when this thing is over, and we get back everybody back out of here, my prayer is that everybody be back out here. That we won't lose any during this time. I have a fear of that, don't we, Sister Shelton? I have a fear of that. That, that some are not going to get back. Some are not going you know, to get pulled away in this thing. They're going to get swept away in this tide. So Christ is the only safe place. In Him is the only safe place. Christ said we have to abide in Him. That's an, that's an action word. You have to do things to abide in Him. Just like in that marriage relationship. It, it don't take 50-50 to have a relationship. It takes 100-100 on both parts. I've got to give God 100% to abide in Him. If I'll do that, He'll help me. He'll keep me. He'll keep you. And we'll come forth shining like pure gold. Can you give Him a hand of praise tonight? <laughs> praise God. Thank you for coming. Let's don't forget about Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Let's be praying for our church. Let's be praying for those that are not able to come right now. Let's pray for those that are here, those that are not here. Let's pray for not just this church, but churches around this land. We need to pray. We need to pray earnestly that God's going to help us. I remember years ago, Brother Charlie, if you get ready, and Brother Albright, will you help usher out, please? I remember years ago of Brother Ox and I preaching a message out here. And he said, when the rubber met the road, Peter denied Christ. He said, I'll go with you to death. I'll go with you to jail. I believe he meant that, Brother Benny. I believe he was really sincere. But he said, when the rubber met the road, Peter said, I don't even know who he is. He denied him three times before the cock crowed. I believe we're in a time when the rubber feels like it's trying to meet the road here. I believe that those who are really saved and really love God are going to go right on through this thing. I believe those that are not sincere in their faith I believe that some of them are going to be left by the wayside. I told somebody today, we're going to find out who the real Christians are now. We're going to find out who's really sold out to God and who's really sincere. We're going to come to a time now, we're not going to be able to be in the house of God for a little while. Don't let that shake your faith. Don't let that hinder your faith. You keep your focus on God and keep, your, keep yourself aligned with Him and walk with Him. And God's going to just bring us right on through. Do you believe that tonight? I believe that. I believe it. I believe it with everything within me. The rubber's going to meet the road and we're going to find out. I'm a real Christian, aren't you? I aim to go through this thing with Christ on board our ship. Can you say amen? Come back Sunday morning. Don't forget, please bring, bring your mask with you. And uh, I appreciate you. I love every one of you. Thank you for complying uh, the way that you have. And uh, we're going to get through this together. Uh, with God being for us, the Bible said, who can be against us? God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday morning, the Lord willing.